All right, we've got some pretty big stuff to tackle in today's video, guys. So uh, let's just jump straight into it. And of course, we need to do that by uh, talking about what happened, what went down. Let's do a release recap. So there was pretty much, I think, two sneakers that dropped. We had a few delays of some other sneakers, which we thought were going to be dropping. I will give you the rundown on those in just a second. Uh, but let's start with the ones that actually dropped. Starting with the Pharrell Adidas NMD S1 Mob. So these dropped, I believe, on Friday. And apparently, at least on the confirmed app, they sold out. I personally didn't go for them. I mean, I'm good on this pair of sneakers. The other one was the Yu-Gi-Oh! collaboration Addy 2000, which is actually pretty interesting. This is one that I actually did try to go for because I thought the unboxing experience and just checking out the sneakers in general would be really interesting, but uh, these were in pretty high demand. They did sell out pretty quickly. That's pretty much it. That's all that really went down. If there was anything else, feel free to let me know down in the comments. So anyway, let's jump into some of this upcoming stuff and let me start with those sneakers that got pushed back. Starting with what was supposed to be like one of the biggest releases for this month. That is the Union Jordan 1 Low AJKO. So the new updated release date for these things is going to be February the 2nd on Union LA's website. And then it's going to be February the 4th for Nike sneakers and all of the other retailers. Now, I'm not entirely sure how they're splitting up this leather and canvas version because I believe that the canvas version is going to be on the Nike sneakers app and then the leather version is exclusive to Union LA's website. But I'm not entirely sure just yet because they haven't loaded up on the Nike sneakers app here in the UK. Now, another pair of shoes that we thought were going to be dropping in January but now have been I guess delayed we don't really have too much information on it is this right here this is the Bad Bunny Adidas Campus. So these were speculated to drop I believe on the 28th of January so I assume since we have all of the official images and everything like that they should be dropping early February. I think potentially with the Yu-Gi-Oh collaboration and the Pharrell collaboration that they just dropped this weekend these just kind of got shifted forward to another weekend in February. All right, moving over to a pretty interesting pair of Jordans. This is one that actually had a release, but it is restocking again right around the corner. Take a look at this. This is the uh, Golf Ready Air Jordan 1 High Panda. Now, I might be mistaken with this, but I feel like this is the first time I've seen a Jordan 1 High Golf version, at least recently. It seems like they've only been doing lows and potentially some mids. And even just looking at this image, they kind of just look like mids, and I don't know whether that's because because they're actually a little bit shorter or whether it's just the jump man on the tongue that's kind of throwing me off. Either way, considering we're actually going to be getting a Jordan 1 High 85 Panda or just black and white later on in February, having this release so close to it is pretty interesting to say the least. Either way, these originally dropped on the 13th of January, however, now will be restocking on the 9th of February. It's literally just a thing where you go on the regular Nike app in order to purchase this pair of shoes. Um, I believe they sold out on the first one, so there is definitely demand for this golf version of the Jordan 1 High. Speaking of Jordan 1s, just a quick reminder, this is something that we spoke about a while ago. This is the Jordan 1 Low Black Toe that should be dropping this year. And now we have a release date, which is July the 28th. Again, not too much to go off of here. Like we don't have any actual images of the pair of shoes. Again, July is a good few months away. So I'm sure we're gonna start seeing in hand and early images very, very soon. Just wanted to give you guys a quick reminder on that release date. Moving over to a leaked pair of shoes shoes that has definitely got people talking um, and that is this right here the first looks at the upcoming Tiffany & Co Nike Air Force One Low. We do have some in-hand images this one looks to be uh, pretty plain to say the least in terms of literally the upper is all over black the only thing that's pretty crazy about this pair of shoes is the fact that you have this uh, pale blue Nike swoosh and then I think the most standout thing is over on the back you have this uh, little silver bar obviously Tiffany & Co being a jewelry company Company, you've got some bling on it at least. And then they blacked out the uh, Debray, what used to be a silver Debray. I don't know why they didn't do something like kind of cool with this. Maybe some kind of Tiffany branded silver bar. I mean, hey, if I'm gonna be paying $400, which is what the retail is for this pair of shoes, I want as much Tiffany bling as possible on my pair of Air Forces. Either way, these are gonna be dropping springtime this year, no specific month, just at some point in spring. We've got rumors of another Jordan 11 for this holiday season. Last week, we spoke about how the DMP 11s were going to be coming back, which apparently is the Neapolitan is going to be dropping in holiday 2023. Now we've got two different speculation mockups on what it could look like because they're not entirely sure at this point. This is, uh, I guess, the more pink version. And then this one down here is the more mocha version. However it goes, it's supposed to have elements of all three colors, white, pink, and this mocha brown color. Um, whether it's dominant in brown or 
dominant in pink, we're not entirely sure yet. All right, we got uh, some official images of one of the most anticipated sneakers for February, and that is these bad boys right here. This is the Air Jordan 4 Seafoam. This is definitely a clean pair of fours. I'm not arguing that, but also we have the Craft 4s, which are dropping uh, a couple days later on February the 11th. So it kind of feels like in terms of fours, I mean, are you gonna buy two pairs of fours back to back, or are you gonna be picking and choosing which one you really want? If I had to choose, I'm taking the Craft 4s just because it's something a little bit different. This one, although it's pretty cool with this seafoam green, I, mean, I feel like I kind of got my fair share of predominantly white Jordan 4s. I will definitely remind you guys that this is going to be coming in woman sizing, so I believe it's gonna stop at a US 10 and a half or something like that. But these are dropping on February the 9th, so it is right around the corner. I believe they've loaded up on the US Nike sneakers app, which uh, should follow here in the UK any day now. Sticking with the color green over here, we gotta talk about these upcoming threes, which we just got some fresh new images of. This is the Air Jordan 3 Lucky Green. Kinda looks to have some of those sale aspects that the Reimagine has. This is definitely a solid option. These are gonna be dropping April the 6th. Sticking with threes, we got a pair coming back a whole decade later. Check these things out. This is the Air Jordan 3 Fear, which is gonna be dropping this holiday. So these images are of the original Fear 3s. I'm sure there's definitely gonna be some people who have fond memories of this pair of shoes. Again, these originally dropped back in 2013. Now they're looking to drop this holiday 2023. We don't have a specific month, just at some point around the holiday season. Moving over to some dunks, we've got an interesting pair full of suede. In fact, the entire upper is suede. Take a look at this one here. This is the uh, Nike Dunk Low LX Gold Suede. Pretty fitting name. This is actually a pretty nice colorway. Like I said, it's all over suede. You can see, I, I mean, I'm hoping that it feels really good in hand. Maybe LX is like luxury. Swoosh is actually leather, and from what it looks like, it, it looks to be either backed by another suede leather material underneath, or that might even be embroidery. I'm not entirely sure. These kind of look like official images, so I expect these things to drop relatively soon. We got some on-foot looks at a pair of fives that I'm actually pretty excited for, although I feel like the in-hand images were a little bit better than on-foot, I must say. Take a look at this here. This is the Air Jordan 5 SE Craft, so obviously uh, taking that Craft name. A lot of the Craft versions that we've seen from Jordan brand, like on the ones and the fours, like they seem to be pretty different. The fours have crazy flip materials and they removed a lot of the plastic. And on some of the ones, we got like inside out version. These just seem to be some kind of suede material um, and then some kind of almost nylon material over the toe box. These are gonna be dropping June the 17th. Definitely let me know your thoughts on these down in the comments. Got another pair of Jound New Balances and forgive me if you're a huge fan, but I feel like these just kind of look like all of the rest. <laughs> this is the brand new upcoming 991. Maybe I'm missing something with here. Definitely let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. Uh, but this is going to be dropping this year. Now, these look to be official images, or at least from some kind of retailer, so I would expect them pretty soon. As soon as we get some more information, I will keep you guys updated. All right, let's get into the meat and potatoes. One of the biggest pieces of news that we had this week was this right here, guys. Oh my lord, that is the Air Jordan 1 High OG Satin. Guess what? It's coming back. That's right, guys. Guys, the uh, the satin breads are going to be returning or kind of it's all it's almost like the first time because when these things originally dropped back in 2016 they were limited to 501 pairs now, the main thing to keep in mind is that this is going to be a woman's exclusive meaning it only goes up to I believe a US 10 and a half uh, or I'm not entirely sure maybe a US 12 I don't know where women's sizes stop in the US here in the UK a UK 8 is a UK 8 a UK 7 is a UK 7 it doesn't matter whether you're a woman or a guy so what we know about this 2023 pair is first it's going to be dropping this holiday season here in 2023 and that we know that production numbers are going to be expected to be significantly inflated obviously a lot more than 501 pairs and then we also know that they're supposed to have some minor tweaks which we're not entirely sure what that is just yet maybe they change up the wings logo or something like that but we do know that it's going to be all over satin and come in the bread color blocking either way let me know what you think about these are you happy about it do you wish that they did a regular pair of bread. Another pair of ones on foot, which is actually looking pretty solid. I'm not gonna lie, these things just have something a little bit different about them, which I am liking. Take a look at this here. It's the Jordan 1 High OG Vibrations of Niger. They're inspired by a Nigerian heritage. They've obviously got the sale accents, which do give them that kind of retro vibe. I can imagine these things look pretty good in the summertime. You know, you got them on rocking a pair of shorts. These are gonna be dropping maybe 27. Another pair of ones, which is definitely a lot more controversial
official as far as Jordan 1s goes. Take a look at this. We just got our fresh new on foot looks at the Air Jordan 1 High Spider Man across the Spider Verse. Geesh, I think these things are actually going to be something that surprises a few people. Listen, I said straight from the get go, I wasn't a fan of these things, and I still I, I don't think these are the nicest pairs of Jordans at all. The more I'm seeing them, the more I'm getting used to this absolutely crazy look about them. But let's say a couple months from now, when people really warm up to this pair of shoes, I think potentially a lot of people could be pretty hyped about them. Definitely let me know your thoughts on these things. In terms of release date real quick, I will let you guys know that these are expected to drop this May 2023. All right, we got our first look at the upcoming Nike LeBron 20. Take a look at this here. What is that? It looks a little bit familiar. What is the, the reverse swoosh? And obviously that is uh, Travis Scott's signature thing is to have the reverse swoosh. So is Nike just going to be kind of trying to slowly get it into more of their other sneakers to boost sales. These are going to be dropping February 16th. Obviously, All Star being for All Star Weekend. This is a pretty solid colorway, especially if you're into basketball sneakers. Sticking with the LeBrons and the LeBron 20. This time, uh, the reverse swoosh is no longer here. They've stuck with the regular one. Uh, this is an upcoming Liverpool collaboration, which is dropping on February the 9th. Uh, you also have the Liverpool logo on the back in this all over suede variant, which looks pretty interesting. Now, there's also a jersey, which I'm not entirely sure if they're going to show here, but there is a custom Liverpool jersey. I think it's their away kit that they are also, I think, going to be dropping alongside this. All right, Nike and Sakai have teamed up quite a few times and they've created stuff that I personally have been a huge fan of. This is apparently the next Sakai collaboration with Nike, the Air Footscape Woven. But these were showcased at Paris Fashion Week, and as you can see, uh, these are going to be coming in a couple different colors. They've got this brown one here, they've got this black one, and then obviously uh, this blue one at the first image. Now, there's not too much that screams Sakai in here, except for the fact that it's got that double lacing. It's like Sakai will find any way to get that double lacing in there. These things are really not my thing. I mean, this blue colorway looks pretty cool, but nothing crazy. It's not really, again, something that I would be rocking on a daily basis. I don't have any specific release date, just potentially at some point this year. Now, this one's pretty funny because I actually made a video of like the most controversial sneakers earlier last week, I think and apparently one of them on that list is going to be returning. Look at this. This is the uh, Supreme Collaboration Nike Air Bacon, which should be releasing this year. Now, this is obviously the original one, which got canceled. If you can see back here, that logo is why it got canceled. The story behind it is that this logo looks very, very similar to the Arabic text Allah, which obviously got a lot of the Muslim communities pretty upset about it being on a pair of shoes. When Nike got all of the pushback, they canceled it and they changed changed the logo on it just to regular, I believe, Nike Air Text. Uh, we're not entirely sure what the colorway is going to be, uh, what Supreme spin on it is going to be either, so we're going to have to wait and see, but all we know is that Supreme is looking to jump into some uh, some of the most controversial sneakers that were dropped in the previous year. Last week, we spoke about Nike's plan of uh, rejuvenating the Terminator low. Another colorway has surfaced. This one is definitely more my thing. The way, this is the Georgetown colors, which originally dropped back in 2008, and they're looking to return this year. Retail is going to be set at $120 and it's going to be dropping fall 2023. Let's talk about pandas real quick. The Nike Dunk Low Panda got a couple things which I thought were very, very interesting. First off, anybody who doesn't have a pair yet, the very small minority of people who don't have pairs, there is going to be another restock, which I mean, damn, even just take a look at this. It's like one of the original drops here, 2021, and then it's just like restock day, restock day, restock day, restock day. Next restock is going to be the 14th of February. February 2023. So right around the corner, just wait a couple weeks and you can get your hand on potentially some more pandas. That's what led Soul Retriever to release this article. Why does the Nike Dunk Low Panda keep restocking? I mean, obviously, if there's going to be a demand, Nike is going to try and sell as many pairs as possible. Here's some of the numbers, which I thought were pretty interesting on StockX. So take a look at the StockX all-time panda sales is 333,780. Average price premium is 66%. So they're still reselling and they're still selling in insane numbers. In fact, according to Stay Grounded on Instagram, the Nike Panda Dunk was the most searched for sneaker on eBay, which was searched for one and a half times per minute. Moving over to a pretty interesting story, especially for some of you guys who uh, decided not to buy your Nike sneakers from Nike anymore and you decided to go elsewhere, like overseas. Take a look at this. Apparently, 330,000 credit card 
Awards has been exposed because of bootleg apparel network was hacked. So again, according to Stay Grounded on Instagram, if you recently made a purchase from an overseas online store selling knockoff clothes or shoes, there's a chance your credit card number and personal information was exposed. So here's the original article from TechCrunch and they kind of go through everything and all of the details about this. And they also name some of the websites that were involved in this. So you can take a look at this here. You bought something from any of these sites recently in the past few weeks, you might want to consider your banking card compromised and contact your bank card provider. All right, moving over to some stuff which is personally very interesting, and that is the future of sneakers. It's something that I've been really, really interested in, whether it's foam shoes, whether it's futuristic design, or something that I think is going to only get bigger from here on out, and that is 3D printed shoes. So we got a couple images from some of the biggest fashion houses who have kind of partnered up with different uh, 3D printing places and created their own 3D printed sneakers, starting off with this monstrosity right here. So this was during Paris Fashion Week, and this was the brand Reigns, which debuted their first ever 3D printed shoe made in collaboration with Zellerfeld. This is the uh, puffer boot, they're calling it, which looks absolutely crazy. Now, if this one's not exactly your thing, how about uh, the new Dior 3D printed sneakers that they gave us a look of from Fall Winter 2023? Now, this one's very, very interesting because it's kind of like the first 3D printed shoe that's kind of made to look like a regular shoe, if that makes sense. Like, normally, a lot of these 3D printed shoes try to go as futuristic as possible with it, but, but not these. These just look like regular dress shoes, it's just 3D printed. It's definitely interesting seeing more bigger brands approaching 3D printed sneakers and their different takes on how to design it. Either way, let me know your thoughts on these and just 3D printed sneakers in general, but let's move over to probably one of the biggest stories this week, and that is the Nike versus Bape situation. This one's pretty funny because it seems like it would just be pretty cut and dry. Nike is suing Bape because Bape copies Nike designs. However, it seems like there's a lot of people taking different different sides and different point of views on this topic. Some people say Bleh, it's just Nike, a big corporation trying to take over and sue everyone. And other people are like, yeah, it looks like a copied design and Nike should have every right to sue them and protect their intellectual property. It's actually come up quite a bit recently. Nike has gone after so many different designers for them copying their designs. I think for the most part, it happened a lot when uh, I guess the whole knockoff trend became a thing. Like a lot of different brands were popping up with a lot of silhouettes, which looked very, very similar to a lot of the Nike sneakers. Now, Bape is the interesting one because Bape has been around for 20 plus years at this point. So it's kind of like a lot of people are like, why are you going after Bape now? Why not when they first started? Well, the answer to that is right here. So apparently Nike met with Bape in 2009 to discuss the designs resulting in the company diminishing its US activity and closing most of its stores in the country. Bape redesigned the Bapester in 2016 to less resemble the Air Force One, but reintroduced the original version of the silhouette in 2021, and that's when Nike says Bape drastically increased the volume and scope of its infringement. And here's a look at all of the genuine Nike products versus the Bape's infringing products, which you can see very, very clearly. I mean, they've got an Air Force One lookalike, got an Air Force One mid lookalike, a Dunk Low lookalike. It's definitely interesting. I mean, I've never been into Bape sneakers or pretty much any Bape products. That's just me personally, but anybody who's kind of, who really likes likes what Bape is doing. Maybe you have an opinion on this. I imagine there's a couple different ways this lawsuit can go. I think the most likely thing is that they'll come to some kind of settlement agreement. But just by looking at this and all of the infringing Bape products, I imagine that Nike has a pretty strong grounds to file this lawsuit. I would definitely love to know your thoughts on this situation because again, I've seen a lot of different point of views um, when it comes to this. So definitely let me know down there. That is the final story for today. But if you guys want to join me unboxing some of the latest sneaker releases as well as those craft fours that video's there